Welcome to the Bladed Tech Channel 64th edition and second year of the Space and Tech Rewind. We are reviewing the milestones that occurred on each day in the week of August 30th through September 5th in space exploration, science, and technology. August 30th, 1901. A dust removing suction cleaner patent was filed by bridge engineer Hubert Cecil Booth on this date. Prior machines using compressed air created clouds of dust, but no means of removal. The dirt simply settled again. Once struck with the idea of using suction, Booth made a preliminary experiment by placing a pocket handkerchief over the plush back of a seat. He put his lips to it, and after sucking, a ring of black spots on the handkerchief proved his principle. Booth started a mobile cleaning service soon after. His vacuum machine had an engine driving a pump provided with a long hose to extend into a house to be cleaned. An early task was to clean the great blue coronation carpet in Westminster Abbey for Edward VII's coronation. We covered the birth of vacuums in Episode 7. August 31, 1909, Benjamin Scheib received a U.S. patent on the Cork Center Baseball on this date. Scheib was the owner of the Philadelphia Athletics, and their baseball stadium was named Scheib Park after the owner. Later, the stadium became Connie Mack Stadium, named after the Athletics' long-term manager, and the home of the Philadelphia Phillies until 1971. A partner in the A.J. Reach Sporting Goods Company, Scheib is credited with the invention of the automated stitching machinery to make standardized baseballs. The Athletics moved out of the city to Kansas City in 1955 and then to Oakland, California in 1968. The Phillies became Philadelphia's sole major league team. On August 21, 1920, Ben Scheib's motor car was overturned after being struck by another vehicle. Scheib survived the accident but suffered brain damage that rendered him an invalid. Scheib died in 1922 and his sons and their heirs maintain a stake in the athletics only until 1950, setting the stage for their exit. A.J. Reach manufactured official baseballs for the American League until 1975 when Rawlings won the contract. September 1, 1969. NASA submitted its 130-page Space Transportation System plan to U.S. President Nixon on this date. The document proposed permanent low-Earth orbit and lunar orbit space stations designed for 6 to 12 occupants and expandable to create a 50 to 100 person facility by 1977, a manned expedition to Mars by 1981, and a permanent lunar base station by 1984. It also outlined a chemically-fueled Earth-to-Station shuttle a chemically fueled space tug to remove crew and equipment between low Earth orbit and geosynchronous orbit, a lunar orbit to surface shuttle, and a nuclear powered interplanetary spacecraft. The reality ended up being quite different. After Apollo 11 accomplished its objective of landing the first men on the moon, political support for further manned space activities began to wane. As a result, Nixon rejected all parts of the program except the space shuttle. We have covered the space transportation plan in detail in episode 30, episode 32, episode 33, and episode 37. September 2nd, 1970, the Apollo 18 and 19 moon missions were canceled by NASA on this date. Congress showed little interest in funding both the space shuttle and a moon exploration program, so with several moon landings behind it, NASA chose the space shuttle for continued funding. The final Apollo moon mission was going to be 17 on December 7, 1972. The final Apollo mission was a low Earth orbit docking with a Soyuz capsule on July 15, 1975. Apollo 18 was slated to visit the moon's Schroeder's Valley and Apollo 19's mission targeted the hygienist rill region of craters. Apollo 20's mission to the Marius Hills of the Moon had already been canceled the previous January. The U.S. has not conducted a moon mission or tested moon mission command module since. SpaceX is planning on circumnavigating the moon with its Starship interplanetary craft in 2023, 
and landing on the moon as soon as 2024. NASA's own Artemis 3 moon mission is planned to launch in 2025 or 2026 and make a lunar landing shortly thereafter. In either case, it will be the first manned lunar landing in at least 52 years. September 3rd, 1752, or 2517 AUC. This day on this year never happened in Britain or the next 10 dates. The Roman era Julian calendar had become 11 days out of step from the solar cycle. So Britain and its American colonies adopted the Gregorian calendar, which moved this day's date up from September 3rd to September 14th. People rioted in the streets thinking the government stole 11 days of their lives. Instituted by Pope Gregory XIII in 1582, the Gregorian calendar has 365 days, with an extra day every four years, the leap year, except in years divisible by 100 but not divisible by 400. Thus, the calendar year has an average length of 365.2422 days. Some other countries, including Russia, did not change to the Gregorian calendar until the 20th century. The Julian calendar was proposed by the Roman Republic dictator Julius Caesar in 46 BC, a reformation of the Republican calendar that itself had been a reformation in 304 BC by Gnaeus Flavius of the original Republican calendar of 509 BC, itself an adaptation of Etruscan and Greek calendars of the day. Oh, and AUC refers to Anno Urbis Conditae, or the years since the original founding of Rome. The last vestige of the empire fell in 1455 to the Turks, or 2220 AUC, but lives on in some respects as the underlying lore of the Roman Catholic Church. September 4th, 1888. George Eastman was issued a landmark U.S. patent for his box camera on this date. On the same date, he registered the trademark name Kodak. The Eastman Kodak Company had been formed on April 24th of that year. The box camera design was the first Kodak mass-produced camera and brought photography to the mass market. As described in its advertising, the operation was simple. Pull the string, turn the key, and press the button. Now anyone could take pictures of family, events, indoor or outdoor scenes, and vacations without needing special skills. Only 22 ounces in weight, it required no tripod or table for support. It used a fixed focus lens which was still fast enough to take practically instantaneous exposures. Its roll film was enough to take 100 pictures, each 2.5 inches in diameter. It would be the most revolutionary consumer camera until Polaroid's land camera in 1948. We covered Polaroid in episode 41. September 5th, 1862. A balloon ascent to a possible height of 35,800 feet, or about seven miles, was made by meteorologist James Glacier and his pilot Henry Coxwell on this date. Although this was the greatest height then achieved by a manned balloon, its precise altitude is unknown because Glacier lost consciousness at 28,900 feet and was unable to read the barometer. Death was narrowly avoided by the courageous efforts of Coxwell, who was able to return the craft to the surface without passing out. It is generally recognized that Glacier and Coxwell's balloon ascended at least to 31,200 feet. The maximum likely height was estimated by extrapolating measurements already recorded on the ascent. Between 1862 and 1866, Glacier made 28 additional balloon ascents. However, Glacier fell ill in 1866 and as a result never flew again. He retired in 1874 and spent the last 30 years of his life attending scholarly association meetings and giving advice to his successors. His son, James Whitbread Lee Glacier, was a widely published English mathematician and astronomer. Before we get to the current event of the week, we wanted to see if you enjoyed the 64th episode of Blade of Tech's The Space and Tech Rewind. If so, click that like button. Did you agree with our choices, or are there other events that were better? 
Go ahead and share with us by dropping a comment below. And if you have suggestions for an event in the future, we'll take those too. We'll credit events we pick for future videos to those viewers that post them. We hope you have been enjoying our content. Have we earned your subscription to our channel? If yes, and you have not yet taken the opportunity as of yet to subscribe, please take a moment to do so now and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss upcoming videos. We want to continue delivering great content to you. You can always unsubscribe and subscribing is free. In an August 20th, 2021 report, NASA's Office of Inspector General said the next generation spacesuit the agency is developing for the Artemis program, known as the Exploration Extravehicular Mobility Unit, or ZMU, wouldn't be ready for flight until at least April 2025 and may be subject to further delays. The OIG also noted that other factors, such as delays in the development of the Space Launch System, the Orion Capsule, and the Human Landing System would also preclude a 2024 landing. The report identified several factors for the delay, such as technical issues, funding shortfalls, and impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. NASA has spent an eye-popping $1 billion on new spacesuit designs, including the ZMU, since 2007, two-thirds of which was dedicated to the peculiarly articulated ZMU design. The amount of contractor graft and engineering incompetence required to blow a billion dollars on a lunar spacesuit seems incomprehensible. Worse, years of funding are still required, due much to NASA's requirement to lighten the heavy and bulky suit. Let's hope that SpaceX is working on something better for its Starship program. Links to some of our most recent episodes can be found in the description section below. You can peruse our entire 300 plus video library by looking at our playlists, which conveniently sort videos by subject. We announce all new videos in our microblogging accounts, which are listed below, as well as in the community feed for this channel. Want to know how to navigate our channel content? We refer to RetroTech and Innovation Documentary segments as episodes. Coverage of current events in space exploration, science, and technology are labeled as shorts. Space and tech history are documented in an anthology called Milestones. And gameplay recordings can be discovered on the Bladed Tech Gaming Channel in videos called Walkthroughs and Side Missions. Stay connected by occasionally checking our Instagram feed and Minds page, where we post content from our upcoming episodes and from episodes past that you may have missed and where we cover current news and events related to channel content. Thanks for watching.